So, you want to pass life sciences and physics, right? It's either you're in grade 12 or you're in grade 11. You just want to get those high marks. So in this video, let me give you tips on how to get a distinction in life sciences and physics. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Piran Gabriel Marapira and I am the founder of Educate, your favorite educational channel. And I'm one of the testament of using great study strategies to be able to achieve greater marks in physics and life sciences. So in grade 12, I was able to get seven distinctions, including in physics and life sciences. And in this video, I'm just going to give you a tip of an iceberg on how to get on with your life sciences and physics marks. So tip number one, you need to know that this is known as a master tip, the tip that can help you achieve all your study tips and eventually your study goals. It is discipline. You cannot get anywhere in life without discipline. You cannot get anywhere without discipline and consistency. So there is no tip that can work if it is not implemented with the principles of discipline and consistency. So now what does it mean to be disciplined? It simply means that you follow up your work you do your work each and every day. Once you adopt a study strategy that fits you the most, you should make sure that you stay consistent with it. And you should not even in any way be lazy because you need to get the marks. Remember, they are trusting you. So first of all, we need to understand one thing, which is known as a curriculum. So we need to understand that each and every question that is set or each and every question that comes in your examination, it is set under the curriculum of South Africa, the CAPS curriculum. So now, once you understand the CAPS curriculum, you will be able to tackle each and every challenge because sometimes the issue is not with understanding a concept. Sometimes you can read something, you can study something, but still not understand how to apply it when it comes to exams. So now, first thing, we need to understand how the curriculum of South Africa works. So now, to better understand the curriculum of South Africa, we need to um, first understand how the exam is set. The people that set your exams, especially in grade 12, you need to know why they, say, they set the exams the way they set them. So now the thing is, some other people can study, some other people can use textbooks, big textbooks with a lot of information. But now the thing is, when they are about to write the exam, they sort of like not grasp anything at all after studying and understanding. You can go to that person and ask them, do you understand this? They will tell you that they do understand and you can see it by the way they explain it. But in the exam, they fail to explain it. Sometimes it is because they do not know how the curriculum works. So now as a student, what I can just tip you, uh, this video is solely based on the how to know what to study because these textbooks are sort of overwhelming they've got a lot of information some of it you cannot comprehend all of it at once so now how how do you know which information to take which information to not take so now the thing is there is this thing known as an examination guideline so as a learner who is doing life sciences and physical sciences in both grade 11 and grade 12 you need to have an examination guideline specifically for those subjects so now what does an examination guideline give you so an examination guideline sort of tells you what to learn so that whenever you open that big textbook of yours you know what to take you know what to not take you know what to know you know what you should you are not supposed to learn at all because that's where the issue comes what do you need to know what do you need to apply in the exam and how do you need to apply it so now let us first understand and i will first start with physics so now the basics of physics or the basics of physical sciences to be precise so you need to know that once you know definitions and you know calculations you know the physics you can get over 90 percent in physical sciences once you have got um, a grasp of definitions as well as calculations so in the examination guidelines each and every examination guideline has got a set of definitions with a certain keyword to use so keywords are the most important things in definitions for example if you can just take a common definition like define boiling point Others would say because they understand the boiling point is the temperature at which water boils or something like that, they would write that in the exam, but then still they would get a wrong answer because the examination guideline states the exact keywords that they want you to involve or to include in a definition. 
So now once you master definitions, those are your free two marks. You can be able to get over 20 marks just from definitions. So now the thing is with definitions, they are specified in which a the, the way that they want them is specified in the examination guidelines. So the examination guidelines is going to tell you that the boiling point of a substance it is the temperature whereby the vapor pressure and the atmospheric pressure is equal. So now coming to uh, calculations in physics, remember that in physics, especially in physics, the physics part of physical sciences has got a lot of calculations and now you need a uh, to have certain tricks or tips which will help you to attack a question that involves a calculation. So each and every formula is given at the back of your question paper in a sheet known as a data sheet or a formula sheet. So you do not have to worry about memorizing all the formulas. So now the exam guideline tells you specifically which formula is used to calculate what. Remember there are certain keywords in case for example let's just say they ask you to calculate the electric field. You know that you use only two formulas. So now when you get into the exam with that knowledge you know which formula to use. So I recommend you to always have an examination guideline for physical sciences. So now when you are going through calculations, you need to understand that there are certain keywords. There are certain keywords that you need to obey, especially when you are doing your mechanics, when you are doing your Newton's laws uh, in grade 12, when you are doing your vertical projectile motion and all those mechanics topics like in paper one physics. So now you need to understand that in paper one, there are certain keywords that are used when they are setting questions. For example, in Newton's laws, keywords like a rough surface, which implies that there's a friction, keywords such as a smooth surface, which implies that the surface is frictionless. So now, how do you then know those keywords? Because right now, this video is not about those specific words. So now, the thing is, when you're practicing past question papers, you should be able to use their memos to be able to analyze how the keywords have an effect on the calculation. So now when you practice all question papers, you will see that in Newton's laws questions, they always mention if there's friction or not. That's just an example. So now how do you master that? You only do that when you practice the question papers. So now the calculations need you to practice the question papers the most. The definitions, you should use the exam guideline, but the calculations, they need a lot of practice. So now when you are practicing, you should always check out how the calculation was met, which forces were included. And then one more trick which I can just tell you is that when you are drawing free body diagrams, for example, just know that a uh, if you are given four marks to draw a free body diagram, it means that there are four forces involved. This is just one of the tips, but then you need to be able to identify that yourself using previous question papers and their memorandums, which give you an idea and some insights on how each and every word in a statement implies something. Like for example, the word constant velocity implies that the acceleration is zero. So I'm just giving you examples so that whenever you are studying previous question papers, you look out for certain keywords and you try to see in the memorandums how do the keywords affect the calculation. Because most of the times, it's not that you do not know how to calculate. Most of the times you do know how to calculate a certain thing, but now sometimes you mix the information or you take the wrong information and put it in another place. So now the thing is, you need to organize your information. And the only way to organize that information it is to it is to go through those past question papers, look at the keywords. The keywords tell you everything about the calculation. So now the formulae or the formulas are given at the end. So you do not have to memorize them, but then you need to learn them and know them. So after this video, I want you to learn the definitions from the exam guidelines. I will make sure that I paste the link in the description to the exam guide, examination guidelines for grade 12s as well as for grade 11 for physical sciences. So in physical sciences, as long as you master definitions and you also master calculations, those two things, they are enough to get you above 90% in physical sciences, just as I did. So now coming to life sciences, life sciences is a bit different from physical sciences. Remember that in physical sciences, you are solely focusing on the calculations and definitions. 
you they do not question your understanding that much such that when you understand the calculations and definitions you are done but when it comes to life sciences you need to understand that concept you need to understand what that specific topic is about so now it becomes very hard because there's a lot of content especially for grade 11s and even grade 12s as well so now now you ask yourself how do i grasp all that all at once so it is stressful to read books trust me no one likes to read books but others prefer to read them but then if you are my type the one that doesn't like reading books you can just go to youtube and search for virtual reality videos so those are specific videos that show you how processes happen in life sciences they are simple to understand because when you see something sometimes you believe it more than when you read it or you have a better vision of it because you have seen it so now the thing is when you are watching the virtual reality videos or the animations most of the times when you just go to youtube and search animation video on for example the digestive system for grade 11s or you can just say animation videos on cellular respiration they can show you how um how the process happens you can see it for yourself you can see the bolus moving down through the osophagus you don't need to read it but when you see it you are able to understand it such that when you start reading the books you will now um you will now have already you already know how it looks like or how it works in real life so life sciences is more of a reality subject more than physical sciences so now when you are taking life sciences i recommend uh, the study resources uh, such as the dbe textbooks so now you should not use those uh, too much big textbooks except if you are a fan of life sciences in such a way that you want to grasp all of the content all at once because we study differently so now for life sciences what i recommend it is to download the dbe textbooks for grade 11 and grade 12 there are dbe textbooks that are prescribed which uh, sort of simplify and just put the brief points so the dbe textbooks work along with um the examination guidelines and as for grade 12s for life sciences you should also use the dbe study guides so each and every topic such as meiosis such as dna such as uh, the human reproduction each and every topic has got its own study guide and then it's a db study guide i will make sure that i paste the link to all those study guides in the description you should check them out and now uh, all you need to know is that once you understand in life sciences, once you understand or when you watch a video and then now you go to a study guide, it will be much easier for you to understand what's written because you have already seen it in a video. So you should watch the illustrative videos or the videos that show how a process occurs because life sciences is all about processes, whereas physics is all about calculations and definitions. So now in life sciences, in life sciences, after watching those uh, those illustrative videos or the demonstrative videos, the ones that show how things are done, now you can go to your DBE textbooks or to your DBE study guides to be able to see uh, or maybe uh, read the process the way they want it. And also you go to the examination guideline because in life sciences most of the times you are asked to describe processes especially in grade 12 they can tell you to describe a process of five marks homeostasis they can tell you to describe up to six marks seven marks of just explaining so now you don't know what to include such as natural selection such as speciation all of those topics and then now you don't know which keywords to put which keywords to not put you should always use the examination guideline as well the examination guidelines gives you all the processes that that can be asked for grade 12s dna replication all of those for grade 11s especially the homeostasis part has got a lot of marks so now after looking and watching at those illustrative videos now you want to go to the study guide and you ask yourself what do i have to look at so for life sciences it is diagrams because in life sciences everything is about diagrams it is rare in life sciences for them to just give you a question without some diagram so most of the times everything is represented diagrammatically so now it doesn't become that hard to analyze a diagram after you watch the video that illustrates it because in life sciences it will be just a diagram and you can label it because you've watched a video showing how things work in that particular in that particular system so for example if they give you the diagram of a virus 
in grade 11 or maybe they give you the diagram of a male reproductive system in grade 12. So everything's about diagrams and analyzing. And another thing, you need to observe in diagrams. You need to know each and every meaning of that particular label. So now, for example, uh, most of the times you will hear questions such as give an observable reason. So when you're searching question papers, they can be like saying, give an observable reason for your answer. Most of the times they want you to observe, they want you to look at the diagram and try to find evidence within the diagram, not what you already know. So now the thing is, life sciences works the most with diagrams. So in conclusion, what I would just want you to wish uh, for you is just good luck for the 2024 grade 12 and grade 11 examinations. So now, do your best and ace the exams. But then in conclusion or in short, I can just say for physical sciences, you should focus on definitions as well as calculations. For life sciences, you should focus on the processes, the processes, those five max processes, as well as the analyzing of diagrams. Then the rest of it, you will be practicing question papers. Remember the master tip. I've said in the beginning that everything works with discipline. You cannot achieve anything without following up on those steps each and every day. No matter how hard it is, you have to push. You don't have a choice, especially when you need to get to university and become something greater in your life. Trust me, I am a testament. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends to stay tuned. And I do have those videos to help you learn more and to always learn to understand.